Welcome to E Pathsala Architecture Lecture Series for uh, PG students. And now I am going to talk in the module of uh, solar water heating uh, systems. And uh, so these are the objectives of this talk. Uh, initially, I will be talking on uh, basics of solar radiation and uh, solar water heating system and components of solar water heating systems and various types of collectors and uh, solar water heating systems. And uh, so initially, I briefly uh, tell about uh, the solar radiation and we have to understand uh, about the sun and the sun's characteristics and the specification of the sun. And uh, as we all know, the sun is a very big uh, planet. And uh, so from the sun, we get all kind of energy resources. Uh, from the sun, we get uh, wind energy and biomass energy and ocean energy and in ocean we have a uh, tidal energy and wave energy and uh, ocean thermal energy conversion etc and uh, from solar heat and uh, we have solar heat applications and uh, through solar radiation and we have a uh, solar pv system and through which we generate uh, electricity and uh, the energy generation is enormous from solar and uh, uh, when we look at the sun it is so amazing the size of the mass is, is it is about 1.9 into 10 to the power of uh, 30 kg and if you look at the radius of the sun it is about 6.96 uh, into 10 to the power of 8 meters an average density of the sun it is about 1.4 and gram per centimeter cube average surface temperature it is about 5762 degree kelvin and we when we look at the solar mass it is combination of uh, hydrogen which is about 70 percent and helium 27 percent and other matters uh, 3 percent and this is the uh, speck of that uh, sun and uh, the sun's total energy output is about 3.8 into 10 to the power of 20 megawatt which is equal to uh, 63 megawatt per meter squared of the sun's surface this energy radiates outward in all direction and the earth receives only a tiny fraction of the total radiation emitted equal to 1.7 into 10 to the power of uh, 14 kilowatt. However, even with this small fraction, it is estimated that 84 minute of solar radiation falling on earth is equal to the world energy demand for one year about 900 eta joule. Uh, when we look at the uh, solar radiation and uh, it is so powerful and we get enormous amount of energy and we cannot tap the entire energy even when we tap even small fraction of that energy and even when we able to uh, store for just 84 minutes of solar radiation whichever is falling on earth and uh, we can supply energy demand for the whole world for throughout the year so that is so amazing and uh, when we look at what is happening in uh, uh, solar that the sun the, sun's, the sun is a hot sphere of gas whose internal temperature uh, reaches over 20 million degrees Kelvin, 20 million degrees Kelvin due to nuclear fusion reactions at the sun's core which convert hydrogen uh, into uh, helium. And uh, so this is the chemical uh, relation and uh, the hydrogen is converted into helium and uh, uh, and 0 0.27 277 uh, mass units of matter are converted into energy so the fusion reaction is taking place and we, when we look at the core temperature of the sun it is about 20 uh, million degrees of kelvin which is 
so high and we get only fraction to, towards the earth and uh, that too we, we are not able to store complete energy nowadays and, and the solar technology is coming up in order to capture the solar radiation and make it uh, useful. And uh, every second 60, 657 million tons of hydrogen are converted to 653 million tons of helium in our sun. The missing 4 million tons are converted to light and heat energy via Einstein's uh, equation and, and radiated into the space. It is estimated that the remaining hydrogen in the sun's core is sufficient to maintain the sun at its present uh, luminosity and uh, size for another 4 into 10 to the power of 9 years. And this is about the uh, solar fusion. And uh, when we look at the solar spectrum and electromagnetic waves or photons are characterized either by their frequency f or their wavelength lambda. The wavelength of solar radiation is given in micrometers that is 1 micrometer that is equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus meter minus 6 meters or nanometer that is 1 a nanometer that is equal to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. A photon can also be described in terms of energy uh, that it uh, carries. And uh, distribution of solar spectrum in terms of wavelength and amount of energy uh, carried and uh, from the solar radiation we have UV that is ultraviolet radiation, uh, visible radiation, infrared radi radiation and other radiation. And uh, this is the range of uh, wavelengths that is uh, in micrometers that is 0 0.15 to 0 0.38 the energy carried capacity is about 7.6 percentage and the visible radiation the range of wavelength it is 0 0.38 to 0 0.72 and energy carried capacity is about 48.4 percentage. Infrared radiation it is 0 0.72 to 4.0 that is the wavelength and in micrometers and the energy carried is about 43 percentage. Other radiation it is whatever it is uh, greater than 4.0 then the energy carried capacity is just 1. And this is about the solar spectrum, it is a combination of uh, uh, UV radiation and visible radiation and infrared radiation and other radiation. And now, so uh, we are going to uh, see about the uh, ex extraterrestrial radiation. So, we have seen the sp specification of the uh, sun and uh, so what are the uh, radiation in the uh, in the sun. So now, so we are going to concentrate on extraterrestrial radiation. So the amount of solar radiation received by a uh, planet depends on its distance from the sun. And the earth is about 1.5 into 10 to the power of 11 meters away uh, from the sun. The extraterrestrial radiation refers to the amount of radiation uh, falling on earth outside its temperature. So, extraterrestrial radiation which is uh, above the atmosphere where there is completely vacuum and uh, the extraterrestrial solar radiation received by the earth is essentially constant throughout the year. So, above the atmosphere and it is uh, fully a vacuum that is that region is called extraterrestrial radiation and there the solar uh, radiation is a uh, constant towards the year that is why it is called solar constant. The extraterrestrial solar radiation is often given in terms of solar constant which is defined as average radiation intensity received per unit area perpendicular to earth surface at mean uh, sun earth distance. The solar constant uh, is taken as 1367, 1367 watt per meter squared. It will never change and above the atmosphere and uh, we have the region of extraterrestrial uh, radiation where the solar radiation is constant and everywhere everywhere in the globe that is 1367 watt per meter squared. It cannot exceed beyond this. And uh, radiation on the uh, earth surface 
the scattered radiation due to gaseous molecules and other particles in the atmosphere is called diffused radiation. And uh, so, above the atmosphere and uh, so this is the earth and uh, this is imaginary line that is atmo atmospheric level and above that that is called extraterrestrial radiation. And uh, this is this area uh, from the earth to the atmosphere level that is called terrestrial radiation. And in the extraterrestrial radiation since it is above the atmosphere and it is full of vacuum and uh, here the solar constant is same throughout the year in the, in the entire globe. But when it comes to the uh, uh, terrestrial uh, region that is just above the above uh, just below the atmosphere and above the earth and there will be lot of gaseous molecules and other particles and dust etcetera and uh, it uh, reduces the effect of the radiation. The radiation gets diffused over here that is why it is called diffused radiation. When radiation does not go through either absorption interaction or scattering interaction and reaches the uh, earth surface directly and it is known as direct radiation. And partially some radiation will not get affected uh, by uh, any interaction or it will not be scattered and partially that radiation will come directly to the earth that is called direct radiation or uh, beam radiation and partially it gets disturbed and it gets scattered and it, it gets interacted with the gaseous molecules then and it will become a diffused radiation. So, uh, so on the earth and uh, the what radiation we get is that is direct radiation and the diffused radiation both we are receiving on this earth and uh, the total is called uh, global radiation and uh, so uh, and the, the total radiation is sum of direct radiation and uh, diffused radiation it is called global radiation and uh, so uh, and here uh, as I said uh, this is extraterrestrial region and this is terrestrial region and this is the earth and partially the radiation comes directly and partially it gets scattered and uh, when we add and direct radiation and diffused radiation then it is called global radiation. And these are some of the uh, uh, measurements and radiation uh, measuring instruments and uh, what we see here it is a pyroleometer. This is an instrument using a, a collimated detector for measuring solar radiation uh, from the sun that is called beam radiation. So, the pyroleometer which is the instrument to measure direct radiation or an, a beam uh, radiation. So, this is the another instrument called pyranometer and uh, it is uh, used for measuring the total radiation that is beam radiation uh, or direct radiation plus diffused radiation. It can be used to measure diffuse radiation only by using a, a shade a ring or disc which shades the beam radiation. So, and we can cover the uh, beam radiation. Uh, uh, with the uh, uh, disc and then we can measure the diffused radiation using the pyranometer. Of course, the pyranometer is helpful to measure the total radiation uh, beam and, and diffused radiation. Okay. So, and uh, so far we have seen about uh, the, the solar system that is the, the, the sun's effect and the sun's di dimensions. And, uh, the, the diameter of the sun and uh, how much energy is being released from the sun and how much uh, the, the earth is receiving and what kind of radiation it is receiving and what is happening in the extraterrestrial region and the terrestrial region and why, what kind of radiation we receive and uh, in the radiation what are the radiations and wavelengths and uh, the energy carrying capacity uh, everything we have uh, uh, discussed so far and now and uh, so the main application of uh, solar energy is a uh, solar water heating system and uh, this is what we are going to uh, see and this is one of the applications of solar energy and uh, from solar energy and, and from heat energy and uh, we get uh, solar uh, thermal systems 
and uh, from from heat energy and we can operate where are various solar thermal technologies and from radiation and uh, through the semiconductor device that is solar photovoltaic device we can generate uh, electricity and uh, now we are going to look at that and uh, from the sun uh, when when the radiation uh, reaches the earth and when it strikes the earth and we get the heat out of it and uh, from the sun's heat and uh, we have a uh, lot of solar thermal uh, energy technologies and one of the technologies is a solar water heating system of course it is very simple technology and it is quite mature technology and uh, the water can be heated up through uh, solar energy and uh, the solar water heaters intercept solar radiation and use it uh, to heat the water solar thermal collectors can be categorized by the temperature at which uh, they efficiently deliver the heat and here in this schematic diagram and we we are seeing here the flat plate hot water system and uh, this is the storage tank and uh, uh, and here the the cold water it is uh, coming in from the tank through the uh, solar uh, flat plate collector and this is the uh, tank and which is insulated properly and at the bottom the uh, the pipeline is uh, taken to take uh, the cold water into the flat plate collector and uh, this is the uh, cut section of the flat plate uh, collector and uh, so this is the uh, glass cover and it is covered fully and uh, so here inside we have the water channel water channel is this circular in uh, uh, size and at the bottom this is the absorber coating so absorber coating is uh, it's a black coating so that the heat conductivity uh, can be increased here and uh, this is about uh, insulation and uh, both the sides all directions have to be insulated properly and uh, there should not be any uh, waste of uh, heat energy and uh, here the uh, sun is penetrating the solar energy is penetrating above the glass cover and it is coming inside and the water is flowing through the water channel and the water gets heated up and it is going up and it, it reaches the tank you may be wondering how the water is going from the bottom to the top without any pump here we have just this is thermosiphon effect without any pump and the water is traveling from bottom to the top you may be wondering how it is possible and when the water is heated up and that when the temperature of water increases the density decreases right and because of the density difference and the water is uh, uh, flowing from the bottom to the top and when the cold water comes in it is higher in density when it is heated up and the density decreases so the cold water will push the hot water into the tank and then the cycle repeats and the water could be heated up up to 70 to 80 degree uh, celsius this is a very simple uh, flat plate uh, hot water system and which is conventionally it is used uh, all over the india particularly some of the states for example in karnataka this uh, this 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 has become mandatory and uh, and before they get approval of the uh, uh, housing and uh, they have to show and uh, they are going to install the water heating system then only the approval will be given and almost in all the houses they install the solar water heating system and uh, all over the world and uh, particularly in, in uh, European countries and Israel particularly and they install solar water heating system for the domestic purpose as well as in an industrial purposes and of course it is also playing major role uh, in uh, hotel industries and uh, of course this is very basic technology very effective technology the efficiency will be in the order of 40 to 50 percent and uh, cheaper and uh, it is uh, cost effective also we can save and uh, enormous amount of fossil fuels when we go for uh, say water heating through solar energy and uh, this technology can be further updated lot of research is going on 
and uh, so and hundreds of uh, papers are published in solar water heating system and for example you can increase the efficiency of the uh, system by changing uh, by increasing the surfaces area of the uh, water channel that now it is circular maybe you can increase the surface area like a hexagon or pentagon or any other shape truncated shape so that the surface area can be uh, increased and uh, and uh, so the the performance of solar water heating system also can be increased that is one aspect another one and uh, people use and uh, uh, like uh, uh, nanoparticles and uh, so by which again the heat conductivity can be uh, improved and people do research how to bring down the cost here maybe they go for and uh, cheaper cost of the materials and they they try uh, various uh, uh, insulation material and they just optimize the system and they try to bring down the cost and they try to enhance the present efficiency and lot of research is uh, going on in the solar water heating system and uh, uh, this is about uh, a slightly advanced water heating system here and uh, uh, here that is uh, mainly for uh, hotel industries or uh, and uh, industrial applications where thousands of liter water is required and here this is about the solar collector it may be flat plate or it may be a parabolic trough collector or fresnel collector whatever collector you can have here uh, that is the solar uh, uh, collectors and here this is the uh, water tank and uh, here uh, the, the hot water is coming and get stored here and this is the cold water supply here and uh, the hot water is taken from above and, and uh, for the purposes and then here and here we have the heat exchanger and uh, the heat exchanger and uh, here uh, I mean the water is uh, uh, coming from the tank uh, and it is pumped this is full circulation and the water is uh, uh, passing through the heat exchanger and it absorbs heat uh, from the heat exchanger and uh, the cold water becomes hot water and it comes to the uh, uh, tank and then it is taken for the various purposes and uh, this is the circuit this is the cold water comes in and hot water comes out and this is the heat exchanger and in the heat exchanger here we have the uh, distilled water and the distilled water is taken through the pump and uh, it gets heated up through the solar collector when it is passing inside and then it comes back and here we use distilled water it gets uh, heated up quickly not only that and uh, the solar collector tubes will not be corroded over here that's why we have a distilled water circuit here and this is the heat exchanger and the heat is transferred from the distilled water to the normal water and then it gets heated up and uh, apart from it and uh, if the industry needs uh, higher temperature and then we can use uh, terminal oil or some other uh, working fluid and uh, we can, which can uh, uh, take more amount of energy from the collector and from which and uh, that heat can be transferred to the water and the hot water can be stored in this tank and uh, it will be useful for the industrial applications and this is for and uh, higher capacity and uh, these are the various uh, components of solar uh, water heaters and uh, in general uh, it consists of three main components and the solar collector which converts uh, solar radiation into uh, use, useful uh, heat and uh, heat exchanger uh, and pump and controller module which transfers the heat from the solar collectors into the portable water and uh, storage tank uh, to store the solar heated water and this is the heat exchanger and this is the pump this is because it is forced circulation and these are the storage tanks and uh, this may be uh, in uh, industries and uh, that is in industrial uh, water heating uh, system and uh, these are the various collectors and uh, for example and uh, to have uh, a low temperature uh, maybe up to 32 degree celsius unglazed uh, glazed absorbers can be utilized 
and if you want to uh, have a, a medium temperature up to 70 degrees Celsius then glazed uh, flat plate collectors can be used and integrated collector systems uh, that is thermo siphon and antifreeze and uh, drain back system can be utilized and for the high temperature applications then we can look for evacuated tube you can go up to 175 degrees Celsius and then you can also go, go for parabolic trough collector and, uh, and through which you can go up to 300 degrees Celsius. These are the various uh, solar collectors and glazed absorbers for low temperature applications and flat plate collectors for medium temperature applications and for high temperature applications you can go for evacuated tube and then parabolic trough and here you are look at the pictures of uh, various uh, solar uh, collector types and this is unglazed uh, uh, collector and this is about low cost uh, plastic uh, flat plate collector and glazed uh, insulated flat plate collector and this is parabolic trough collector and uh, there here you see evacuated tube collector. So, there will be no air inside the heat transfer will be very effective. This is about integral co uh, collector uh, storage system and uh, of course and uh, here you get uh, uh, low temperature and uh, uh, medium temperatures and when you go for parabolic trough collector and this is the absorber in the uh, parabolic trough collector and this is the uh, collector the, the sun rays will strike the collector and it gets uh, reflected towards the absorber and uh, the absorber area is very small but the collector area is big. That ratio is concentration ratio the ratio between the collector area and absorber area that is the <coughs> concentration ratio. This is uh, when the concentration ratio increases and uh, you can get more temperature uh, output and uh, normally the terminal will be flowing in the receiver and then through which heat can be transferred uh, to the water and the evacuated tube again and uh, since the air medium is not there the heat transfer will be effective. So, and according to the applications we can go for various types of collectors available and uh, uh, people even uh, nowadays they invent a, a lot of uh, new collectors for various applications like uh, Fresnel collectors and etcetera. So, and uh, so far in this particular lecture and we have we have seen so far about uh, the, the sun's specification and how uh, the what are the dimensions of the sun and uh, how much energy uh, we can derive from the sun and how much energy is coming to the earth and uh, what are the uh, uh, radiations available and, uh, and then and about the uh, what is happening in the extraterrestrial uh, uh, region and terrestrial region and what kind of radiation we receive to this earth like global radiation that is direct radiation and uh, diffused radiation and uh, then and uh, with this uh, heat energy and there are lot and lot of applications are possible from the solar sun energy's heat and one of the applications we have seen so far that is about solar water heating system and for the domestic applications as well as for the industrial applications and we have seen lot of solar collectors and, uh, and uh, still the performance could be increased improved by going for some advanced collectors and, uh, and increasing the surface area of the uh, absorber and even using nano fluids and uh, with this I, I stopped it stop the lecture. Thank you so much.